The Bible says in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. It is important that Christians are not to be ignorant and they're yes. to be aware of what Amen. Satan's doing so that they don't, get, they don't fall prey to his system. Now what's really interesting right here is that I'm going to do more studies on this. But there is something that I really believe that there's a relationship right here. There's something here at absolute zero that you hit a spiritual realm. You come outside of the physical realm and you hit something spiritual. There is something weird about frozen, cold, absolute zero. There's something that goes on. Let's start off with Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. First of all, we've got to understand there is a frozen sea of glass that divides the third heaven with the rest of the universe. Revelation chapter 4. <clears throat> Notice the Bible says in verse 3, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in, the, in sight like unto emerald. You also notice right here that in verse 6, And before the throne there was a what? Sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Beyond the sea of glass, this one we can all agree in the Bible, what divides from one side, what divides from one side of the frozen object to the other side, you'll hit a spiritual realm. Over here, we'll see the physical realm. On the other side, you're going to hit something spiritual. We can all agree with that in Revelation 4. Because above the sea of glass is what? Heaven, the celestial beings. All of God is a spirit. It's not, nothing, nothing that is fleshy. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. See, nothing fleshy. It's all spiritual. On the other side of the sea of glass, there is some sort of spiritual activity, but mostly it's bound to the laws of, uh, the, laws of the physical universe. See, everything beyond it is physical, fleshy. But on the other side of the glass, frozen, is something spiritual. Oh, by the way, all, phys uh, all physical properties are lost once you hit absolute zero, once you hit that temperature. All physical properties are lost. But isn't it also interesting that in science, one of the key powerful elements that can eliminate all other sorts of elements is that absolute zero temperature. That's the thing that the most powerful element a lot of people would refer to to combat all other sorts of elements of physical properties in science. There's something beyond it right here. Now this is what I'm really interested in. Keep your hand at Genesis 1. But let's look at some of the things right here concerning frozen objects, which is interesting. When you study about unclean spirits and devils, what you're going to find out is this. They do have an infatuation with water for some weird reason. Let's look at Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Devils, they always like something unclean, and they like water for some strange reason. We're going to look at the book of Mark. <laughs> Mosquitoes, that's proof. Mark chapter 5, actually. Mark chapter 5. Chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 12. And all the devils besought him. See, they begged Jesus. They want to go to a specific location. Saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. They want to go into unclean animals. But look where they want to go. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and their herd ran violently down a steep place into the where? Sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. They all want to go to the sea. This is called what? Sea of glass. Devils have some sort of connection with the sea. But not only that, who's also located in the sea, in the deeps? Leviathan, you're thinking. Look at the book of Job. Ooh, good teaching. Amen. There's something about the sea. 
Look at the book of Job. We're going to look at Job chapter 41. Chapter 41. <clears throat> We're going to look at verse 31. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh, notice, the sea like a pot of ointment. And who is that in context with? That's in context with Leviathan, verse 1. Canst thou draw Leviathan with a hook? Oh, that must be some dinosaur, says Kent Hoban, says creation. No, no, no. Look at verse 34. Who is Leviathan? He beholdeth all high things. He is what? A king over all the children of pride. Okay, that's the devil. Not only that, look at verse 32. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be what? Hoary. Oh, by the way, hoary, if you... Uh, Compare that word, word hori, it matches it up with manna. And if you know your Bible, when the Jews uh, ate manna in the wilderness, it came from the Leviathan's head. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, okay, just who for thought. We're not going to look at those verses, though, but who for thought, okay? Any of you want to watch, I have a video uh, that's called Human Sacrifices of the Antichrist, and that would show it. It's hori, what? Frost. Like, like, kind of like that, hoary frost almost. See that? But isn't it interesting uh, when you watch Sleeping Beauty and then they slay the dragon, which represents Satan, what came out? Like hoary white frost. Ah! <laughs> strange, strange, see? Things that are frozen. But because he is Leviathan, he also makes it, what, boil. There's fire mingled as well. Can fire go together with ice? That's why you have a thing called dry ice. But look at Revelation, if you don't believe me. There's fire on the sea of glass. 14, Revelation 14. Now, Revelation 14. What animal can, go, can blow fire underneath the water? So it has to be Satan. See? Satan. Look at Revelation chapter 14. Oh, I don't believe it. You don't read your Bible much. Okay, look at Revelation 14. And look what the Bible says right here. Verse 3, And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man can learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Uh, verse 5, In their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And then look at chapter 15, verse 2. Chapter 15, verse 2. So this is at the same location at the throne. Now, if you remember Revelation 4, at the throne was the sea of glass, right? Revelation 15, verse 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass, what? Mingled with what? Fire. Look at Matthew 24. 25, excuse me. Look at Matthew 20. Matthew 25. So that's why there's something here where there can be fire in this absolute zero. But that's why it's, isn't it very interesting if you remember one of my teachings. I mentioned that if there were aliens, Nephilim and all that kind of stuff, where would, the, where would they mostly come from? Where's the root cause? The bottom of the sea. But below, why? Because below the bottom of the sea is what? Fire, hell. There's, a, there's some intertwining connection right here. Intertwining connection. But let me show you something that's pretty obvious that you never thought of before. Look at Matthew chapter 25. Where do devils end up in the end? The lake of fire. And the, the Bible calls hell their home, the home of the devils. It wasn't prepared for humans. You've got to realize this. Humans are not meant for hell. It is only because you join the devil's side that God has to damn you to hell. But the proper home coming for them, their proper home, is fire mingled with water. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 25. Look at verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting what? Fire. What? Prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, 
I mentioned Genesis 1 all this time, right? Go to Genesis chapter 1. Here we go. So Matthew 25, this combination of fire and sea is the home abode of devils. But that's why it's very interesting when Satan roamed around the earth, God had to cleanse off, cleanse off the evil. And how did he have to cleanse off the evil? Through water, the deep. And Leviathan swims in the where? The deep. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and what? Darkness was upon the face of the where? Deep. When there's darkness and water, that's a negative sign. That's not a good sign. Creationists insist that this is something the Lord was preparing as a home for humans. You don't want something dark and watery. That's not a home for humans. That's a sign of something evil happened. So what did God have to do with the darkness and the water? In the first two days of creation, he had to separate light from darkness, day number one. The waters, what did he have to do? He had to divide the waters, one at the top, one at below. Why? Demonic activity, see? He was cleaning house. But isn't it interesting? Hell is known to be what? A dark place. Lake of fire, known as out of outer darkness. It's dark. But things go dark when you get more and more what? Cold. When you feel more and more cold, your eyes feel like closing and it gets more and more dark for you. There's something supernatural, something spiritual beyond it. But not only that, when you go more and more down, down, down and toward the sea, it becomes what? Darker. That's right. Darker. And you get closer to where? The fire. Hell. There's some connection here. Look at some of these people. I'm going to open a Pandora's box now here. Why don't you research a lot of people who went through absolute zero or some kind of experience with that? Antarctica, why does the government, out of all other nations and places, why is it in Antarctica? They would put boundaries and you can't do exploration here and stuff like that. Why did Hitler go into Antarctica during World War II? Why is it that a lot of the strange conspiracies would come out concerning Antarctica? Maybe that's where demonic activity is? Not only that, the bottom of the sea, why does it get dark? And that's where devils come from. Not only that, why is it that people like David Blaine, who can spit out frogs out of, out of his mouth like the false prophet, that he can do all sorts of stunts and all sorts of uh, really demonic stuff for magic tricks, but there's one thing he was scared of, and that's being inside a frozen block of ice. And ever since then, he was not the same. He was so scared ever since that time. Did he see something supernatural and spiritual? I'll tell you one thing. When he fell off one of the tall buildings and landed on the ground, you know, with probably just some weak items at the bottom to soften his landing, but it was a crazy, crazy stunt, you know. It was a very crazy stunt. After he did that crazy stunt to prove his magic, when he got up, you know what he said? He said, I just experienced a vision of all races and sexes and religions all becoming one and united. Something weird about the cold. But what did God hate? What, what is the closest where you get spiritual death to become a child of the devil? Spiritually, what? Cold. Ooh, amen. That's good. And that's likened to what? Death. Dead Christians are likened to what? The cold cold Christians. And if you're a dead person, dead in spirit, who are you a child of? Satan. Look at Ephesians. Look at Ephesians. Look at Ephesians. You don't believe me? Then we'll close, all right? Then we'll close. I could Look at Ephesians. Hey, that's good. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter Look at the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1, and you hath he what? Quickened, made alive, who are what? Dead and trespasses and sin. You're dead. But look at this. When you're dead, you're connected to Satan. Verse 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to who? The prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, 
among whom also we all had our conversation times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Is that not interesting? But not only that, isn't it interesting that the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, Satan has, uh, what, the power of death? How about that? And what is the lake of fire called, where it has the sea? It's called what? The second what? Death. Second death. There's a connection with sea right here. There's something with the sea that devils have a connection to. But it's also very interesting why there are some conspiracies about reptilians and aliens, what, do, what kind of blood they have. Blue blood. Blue blood. And that's another teaching I did about the blue-blooded aliens on my other video, that back then they had a water circulation system. Why? Because they don't have blood. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says. They don't have red blood. Something watery. Something watery right here. Isn't that something to chew on? Heavenly Father, I pray you'll bless tonight's Bible study and dismiss us now with your blessing. Thank you so much for uh, your word. It is never a boring book. We can always learn so much more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.